afternoon, we are at the Rasanyana Academy and we have a most wonderful tantric teacher, a very famous in all of the world, uh, Sarita. Well, she's already a tantric teacher for many years, three decades, and um, um, traveled a lot, had many uh, big gurus teaching her, um, lived and, and worked with Osho for a long time and now independently having her own team and her own tantric school. Um, Sarita was educated into the classical Indian Tantra style, but is also very acquainted with neo-tantric uh, techniques. And this weekend she came to teach uh, to the students and external participants by Rath Tantra. And maybe you could explain in shortly what is the concept of Bhairav Tantra? Mm -hmm. So the, the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra is a, it's a scripture which contains 112 different meditation techniques. And these meditation techniques, they cover all different aspects of the human life experience. And this is the beauty of it, that we learn that Tantra is about all that we are, and everything that we are can become a portal into spiritual awakening. Whether that is our sexuality, our emotions, all of our senses, our mind, kundalini energy, chakra system, uh, subtle energy, and different dimensions of our soul, spirit, etc. So all of these different facets of who we are is the door into expanded consciousness. <laughs> and for you, is expanded consciousness the same as spirit spirituality? Spiritual awakening. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, <clears throat> is that the purpose or the aim of Tantra, you would say? Yes, Tantra is a path to enlightenment. And it's a path that doesn't take us out of who we are. It helps us to integrate our spiritual awakening in the body, in life. Mm in every moment of our life, whatever we're doing, whether we're working, playing, loving, uh, whatever we want to achieve, we can do it with awareness and with love. The merging of love and awareness is Tantra. As we experience your teaching this weekend, you work with 112 sutras, we could pick, or one of our group leaders could pick uh, a sutra. Um, and we had a wonderful combination of the Sutra of enjoying food and the Sutra of enjoying sexual energy and the Sutra of um, really experience omnipotence mm -hmm. and to others. Um, so actually you never know when you start such a training what kind of subjects will be uh, <laughs> integrated in such a weekend. Well, in this weekend what I wanted to do was to experience the people who had come mm -hmm. and to see what emerged from this gathering. Mm -hmm. And so I asked uh, people to choose a card representing mm -hmm. one sutra. Mm -hmm. And then from there we developed the group. Mm -hmm. And that made this group unique from any other group. Because yeah. that combination of sutras will never happen again. No. Uh, when I teach the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra as a training, I do it in Dharamsala, India, so I do nine days one year, mm -hmm. nine days the next year, nine days the third mm -hmm. year, and in three years we cover the 112. Oh God. <laughs> and in those groups I plan how I'm going to move okay. through this, yeah, the yeah. sutras, and I do it according to facets of life force energy. Mm -hmm. So we might, <clears throat> for example, we're going into creativity or into sex, birth and death, or uh, into these all different facets of human mm. life experience and mm. I choose different sutras that will best address those different subjects. Mm. Mm. Who made you acquainted with the Bhairav Tantra? That was Osho. That was Osho? Yeah. yeah. When I met Osho the first time he was speaking on the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra and the sutra he was commenting on was one that we did yesterday mm -hmm. which is while engaged in sexual union Stay attentive on the fire in the beginning, and so continuing, avoid the embers in the end. Mm. This is a magnificent sutra, which completely transformed my life the first time I heard it. Okay. And he gave an hour and a half discourse on that sutra. 
And from then on, I have been a tantrika. <laughs> <laughs> and yesterday, of course, we didn't practice it in sexual union because this is a weekend group. And I only teach uh, meditations that are in sexual union in the couples training. Mm. So then I ask couples to go to their bedroom and practice different yeah, yeah. methods. But in this weekend, people were practice, practicing it on their own and experiencing how to move sexual energy through the body and experience that fire and keep stoking the fire mm -hmm. without going to release, like genital release, and ending the whole game. Mm -hmm. So we learn how to prolong the game of sexual energy and sexual joy and fulfillment for hours. Mm. So that's Wonderful. what we were playing with yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Today you did a beautiful exercise also with actually um, refining the energy through the chakras. Mm. Um, and then actually it becomes a kind of fountain out of the seventh chakra, mm. dispersing mm. into the space. Mm -hmm. um, and for example, if you look at the Chinese Tantra, the Taoism, mm. Taoism mm -hmm. it's more kind of circle, kind of wave mm. in the body. Why is that different in the Indian style, so to say, and the Chinese? Why they work more with the circulating? You know, we can play with the energy in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And some of the meditations we use circulating of the breath and the energy. Mm -hmm. And this one in particular, it's experiencing, like first opening up your whole central channel, your chakra system, your Kundalini energy. And once you're open, experiencing the shower of light, grace descending down through that mm -hmm. central channel. So that's what we were playing with today. Mm. And it's very special to do that in partnership as we yeah. were doing. Yeah, because then it's a double energy or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, when we work with a partner, basically we're calling forth the inner male and the inner female. Mm -hmm. And so the outer male or outer female represents the divine masculine without and it also represents our own inner male, inner female and we can learn to have union mm. with our own male, female inside, the male, female outside, the right and left sides of the brain meeting. Yeah, so all the <laughs> opposites in our body and in our yeah. soul are meeting. Meeting. Why is it so important? Because we're born actually as a male and a female mm -hmm. and many things in life, in our lives are paradoxical. Yeah, my day, mm. men, women. Um, why it's so important to experience through your life this union? What does it ex give it extra to the life of people? Uh, what I sense is that everybody, without exception, is searching for unity, oneness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can find that oneness by working, that oneness by working within ourselves, finding that integration inside. We can also find it, the integration with another, mm -hmm. and also with the world or with nature. And uh, because we are searching for that, it's very important that we give ourselves permission through practicing Tantra methods mm -hmm. to experience that in a very high quality way. Mm. And uh, Tantra will play a lot with duality, where we bring two opposite polarities together. And we discover what happens when they meet. What is that alchemical quality mm. that is produced through the meeting of opposites? Okay. And if I could say what Tantra is in a nutshell, it is that. It's playing with duality and finding what happens when it meets. Mm. And that experience is godliness, yeah, which we're godly. all capable of. Okay. <laughs> so God is in us. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that makes us actually divine beings with a lot of responsibility, so to say. Yes. Responsibility, if you dissect the word, it's the ability to respond mm -hmm. in this moment. Mm -hmm. And we are responsible beings when we bring awareness into our lives. Mm. And one of the things I'd like to mention about Tantra, which is important, it's not just something you learn from a book or that you think about. Mm -hmm. It's not like a scholarly research. It's really a research that happens through our own lived experience. As we live the meditation methods, mm -hmm. we transform within, it draws out our own innate wisdom, mm -hmm. and we start living as wise beings anchored in this earth, in this body. Mm -hmm. Imagine that many more people in the world would learn tantric techniques. Mm -hmm. What would be the result? 
<laughs> a very blissful world. Yeah. <laughs> Ecstatic, joyful Ecstatic, world. Yeah. Because yeah. you see how tantric people are, the people who practice tantra, mm -hmm. they become very free, very wild, joyful, playful, mm -hmm. uh, wise beings. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what the world needs, actually. Mm -hmm. As our next step, we need mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So we have a big mission. To yes. Go for. Yes. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> um, now you have a teacher trainer in your uh, training, teacher training, training in yes, your institute. Yeah. Uh, could you talk a bit about that? Because I think that our students also like to know what it means, and maybe other people. Yeah. Yeah. So the teacher training, we're working with the concept of sex to super consciousness. Mm -hmm. This is a term coined by Osho, mm -hmm. and. Uh, in that training, we're actually teaching people to teach a series of groups, which is on the chakra system, mm -hmm. working through the chakra system from sex to super consciousness. And so you are actually participating in those groups and learning how to teach those groups. It's very mm -hmm. intensive training. Mm -hmm. It takes two years and it's in four different parts and mm -hmm. each part is two weeks. Mm -hmm. And it's really uh, highly professional. The reason I chose that subject for a teacher training is because essential to the path of Tantra is Kundalini energy, working with that energy mm -hmm. and working with the chakra system. And if you get that covered, mm -hmm. then you can branch out from there and you might choose to devise your own different kind of mm -hmm. Tantra groups from yeah. what you learn. Or you might choose to teach those series of weekends. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. You stick to what, yeah. You what the training was and you learn yeah, to teach some, it to Yeah, some people yeah. they like to do that mm -hmm. and some people they like to develop their own mm -hmm. thing Methods. afterwards. Yeah. And both are possible. Yeah. But you become a very um, high quality teacher from that training because you go through a lot. Mm -hmm. Tantra, as I said, it's learned by experience and you go deep within yourself mm -hmm. and you really uh, process very profoundly the, the different methods that are being offered and there's a lot of methods being mm -hmm. offered. Mm -hmm. And then you're developing your professional skills from many different angles. And it's uh, extremely fast track, mm -hmm. powerful, potent. And in order to do that training, people have to have already done quite some work on themselves. Mm -hmm. And we have a questionnaire they fill out yeah. about their experience. And then from that, we decide if they can come into the training or not. Mm -hmm. But I'm really pleased that there are so many people interested in actually moving towards a profession as a Tantra teacher. Wow. It's just fantastic what's happening and from all different countries. Yeah, and that's actually new, yeah? That Tantra that's becomes new. a profession, yeah? yeah? It's, yeah. New. yeah. it's new. Yeah, it's new. It's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. I had another question. Um, for example, if you look at the Buddhist Tantra in Tibet, mm -hmm. Uh, most of the teachers there uh, work in a very ritualistic, traditional way. Um, they have often the saying that Tantra is not for the normal beings, that you need to be a devotee, that you need to be a chosen one, uh, that you need to be in a monastery to be able to really master the techniques. What's your opinion on that? How does it function? Well, uh, traditionally, Tantra has always been taught in different levels. Mm -hmm. So there's the Tantra for lay persons to help people have a very blissful life. Mm -hmm. And there's another Tantra which is a path to enlightenment. And there's also the Tantra which would be for mastery, inner mastery, mm -hmm. to the point where you can start teaching that mm -hmm. and sharing that with others. And people are drawn to Tantra for different reasons. Some people, they want to heal sexual dysfunction, for example, which mm -hmm. is a valid reason. Some people, they come because they dream of having this unity consciousness in their love relationship. Mm -hmm. Some people, they want to learn the science of Tantra. And some people are really call, called as adepts. And mm -hmm. uh, what I see in today's world, we need Tantra desperately in today's mm -hmm. world. We must have these teachings available. And people go as deep as they are capable of. So I don't see any danger in giving people Tantra teachings. Okay. Because they will only go as deeply as they can go. And then if it's not appropriate for them, they're going to drop off. Okay. And they're going to do something yeah, else. Yeah. And only those who are really devoted to taking it all the way to the spiritual awakening will stay and stick with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and go keep going deeper. 
so uh, so it's self-regulating it's self-regulating yeah because you can only go as deep in tantra as you are willing to practice the methods if you don't practice the methods then you're going to stop with uh, that transformational process and yeah. the the it takes dedication dedication and discipline yeah, dedication yeah. and discipline you need to practice the methods it's all about the the um, really dedication to your practice mm. to your spiritual path and is it good to have a teacher a master it's good to have a teacher and what I found with Tantra people is they're like bees going from this flower to mm -hmm, that flower mm -hmm. collecting the nectar mm -hmm. so they tend to go to one teacher then they'll go to mm -hmm. another teacher another teacher and I trust that process so if I have a student and they want to go somewhere mm -hmm. else I encourage them great do it then maybe some other time they come back or maybe they've been with some other teacher then they come to me and it's all one big happy family basically yeah. you're gathering the nectar you are creating the honey inside of yourself so it's important to honor and respect where you are drawn to learn yeah and in general around teachers I would say uh, this is something I learned from Osho if you are with a teacher and you feel like your heart is expanding and growing wings mm -hmm. this is a good teacher for you if you feel like you're shrinking like your heart is shrinking and closing that's not a good teaching for you. It doesn't mean that's a bad teacher. Yeah. It just means for you it's not appropriate in this moment. Mm. So follow your heart. Really trust what your heart is mm. telling you. Mm. But we also see now streams in Tantra who, shows, who show even violence, dark mm. sides of it. Mm. Um, how, how do you relate to that? What would be your vision on that? Uh, you know, what I... Uh, understand about Tantra is that it's the blending of the masculine and the feminine so as long as that balance is there in a Tantra path then yes if it goes into imbalance where the feminine is not being honored meaning love and devotion mm -hmm. that's not Tantra in my opinion if the masculine is missing that's also not Tantra masculine we could speak of the masculine like the lingam, meaning pillar of light. So this is the phallus principle, the pillar of light, consciousness. If that's missing, that's also not Tantra. I have three statements and I just want your comment on that. Tantra is an art. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, an art is something that we we bring our creativity into, mm -hmm. we also bring a certain amount of discipline. Mm -hmm. We want to develop beauty, art mm -hmm. is also about beauty. We align with spirit, we become a conduit for the great spirit mm -hmm. and we let the great spirit create through us. Mm -hmm. And that is art in its highest form. Exactly. It's also a science. <laughs> that was my second one. You're going too fast. So, Tantra is a science? It's also a science. And why? Because we are using our logical brain as well, mm -hmm. and we're piercing through the, the subjective experience into the objective. We're mm -hmm. piercing through the mundane into the spiritual reality mm -hmm. and we're bringing that back into the body into form mm. and that takes a lot of discernment intelligence uh, understanding objective uh, dissecting mm -hmm. of the material mm -hmm. and actually you're using your own body as a laboratory your own mm -hmm. body your own subjectivity mm -hmm. becomes your mm -hmm. lab and you are the scientist of your own mm. lab <laughs> <laughs> and we're going uh, into our inner universe yeah. and through our own body we discover the whole universe yeah through the inner so the micro is the, micro. the yeah, yeah the microcosm is the macrocosm oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you're your own astrologer so yeah, to say. it's really yeah. a very profound science mm -hmm. as well as being mm -hmm. an art you've been talking this weekend um, because we are in a university and we like all such research uh, things Talking about quantum science, mm -hmm. he is quite modern, yeah, it was, was coming up since the 60s in the last century and now yeah. developing. 
And science actually hasn't understood yet what is the impact of the truth of the <laughs> quantum <laughs> science, otherwise they wouldn't continue the way they are doing, mm -hmm. I think, in many sciences. Mm -hmm. But also the relationship with Tantra or the, the commonalities in it, uh, the, the uh, crossover, could you yeah. say something about that? What the mystics, Tantra mystics or Vedic mystics have known for thousands of years, Tantra, uh, sorry, science is now beginning to understand. So we're having a circle happening. Mm -hmm. And what we think of as priests, Vedic priests, for example, or Tantra priests of ancient times, actually they were scientists. And they had developed a cosmology which is very intricate, very expanded in its wisdom. And then how to bring that into a way that the common people can understand. So they developed mantra, yantra, tantra methods to help everybody to experience these cosmic principles, which are actually mm -hmm. scientific principles. Mm -hmm. And as far as I understand, that science of those days has gone further than the science of today. Mm. And the scientists today are now starting to unveil yeah, right what at the, the point. mystics yeah. have been saying since time immemorial. Oh so it's a circle that's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very good that there are certain scientists who are also mystics. Yeah, because what brings world. that combination when you're unspiritually well developed mm -hmm. and you're a scientist? What yeah. could it bring to the world? It can bring an enlightened quality of life. Mm. Because we have all the potential through our science to create a paradise world. Mm. If we listen to nature, there's a scientist named Victor Schoberger who had developed mm -hmm. uh, working with water consciously. Mm -hmm. So he talked about a science where instead of raping nature, mm -hmm. you look at nature, you listen to nature, and you copy nature. And this is a true way of developing science. Mm. So if we can do that, we will come very close to mysticism. We can make a paradise world where we are in tune with nature and at the same time as we develop our mystical qualities through Tantra, mm -hmm. we'll have a very balanced earthly bliss mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in that paradise mm -hmm. world that we wow. create. And I think that's what the ancients were developing. They mm -hmm. did develop it. And then as time went on, it went into some kind of warping and yeah, yeah. whatever happens. And decline. Decline. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's time for us to reclaim that possibility again. Yeah. And that will happen by the merging of the masculine and the feminine. Because if you have one that's dominating the mm -hmm. other, you don't have balanced society. Okay. So we need to bring that balance again. And what was dominating us the last thousand years, do you think? Uh, well, the last couple of thousand years and even more, it's been the masculine dominating the feminine. And before that, when there was matriarchal mm -hmm. society, women were dominating men, mm -hmm. some of it in a very ugly way also. So mm -hmm. then the men, of course, had to take revenge. Mm -hmm. So the new era, we shouldn't make that mistake again because now we're moving more into a matriarchal kind of direction. Mm -hmm. But I would like to offer a word of warning and advice that this time women should not dominate men we need to bring the masculine and the feminine into equal harmony, and that happens through Tantra. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really expressed very beautifully through the, the Shiva Linga that you see in India and in all these different temples or mm -hmm. by the roadside, you see the beautiful phallic symbol inside the yoni. Yeah. So this is showing us balance of the masculine and feminine principles or the yin-yang symbol that comes from China, that's also mm -hmm. showing us perfect balance. In the West, we do not have that balance yet. For example, you see these big uh, obelisks, these big Buildings, conical yeah. towers, yeah. which are in almost every major city all over the place. And they don't have any yoni around it. They don't have the feminine. They just have the phallus. Yeah. So this is, in a way, giving the message that uh, testosterone rules. <laughs> And what are the qualities for testosterone? Testosterone is about competition, territorialness, goal-orientedness, uh, uh, physical strength and fight if necessary. So these qualities are beautiful when they are in the service of love and devotion.
Yeah. They're in service of protecting the feminine qualities, then it's very balanced. So if we just have testosterone in these conical pillars, that's dangerous for the world, mm. as we see. Then we it will see, become yeah. a war-oriented, competition-oriented mm. world. So I think we need a new movement where people go and make yonis around all mm. of those <laughs> pillars. <laughs> yeah. And we start creating that balance. Yes. Feminine, masculine, together. So the last statement, Tantra is nature. Tantra yes. is the, the perfect nature. Yes, it's the perfect harmonious nature. Okay. I have one more question. So uh, could you uh, say more about uh, Tantra as a solution and why is it needed uh, for nowadays time? Mm. Tantra is the solution for nowadays time. Because we're, you know, if we go in the direction that the junk science is taking mm -hmm. us, it's really going towards the destruction of the world. Mm -hmm. So obviously that's a very stupid direction. Mm -hmm. We're fouling our own backyard and we're fouling our own house. We're just like creating shit. Even our <laughs> own know? body with the food we have. Yeah, with the food and like we, we're behaving very stupidly. So Tantra is desperately needed. Bring the balance that will bring healing to our bodies, to our relationships, to our societies, to our world. Earth and sky balanced. Male and female balanced. Mm. Sex and spirit balanced. And what do you think? I mean, we started the Tantric University. Mm -hmm. At one point, you could say, University is that you know the solution for tantra, but I I thought when I started this school mm -hmm. that it's very important that we take tantra so serious mm -hmm. and put it on the uh, first place and maybe yeah. a, a scientific subject also yes. to study. What's your vision on that? I think you're a genius. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just fantastic yeah. as a vision and and that you're on that mission and that you're doing it. This is absolutely mind blowing. And it, Holland is the right place to start it because Holland is innovative. Holland has amazing, innovative kind of ideas that it brings to the world and has been a leader in kind of changing mm -hmm. concepts in mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. for quite some time. Yes, so but it's we're very also correct. first and second chakra country. Mm -hmm. And I think to make it grow, that's why we now are now a nomad university, we need all Europe. Yeah, you need yeah. the people of different cultures to come in mm -hmm. to again bring that melting pot where you're going to find equilibrium because every nationality will bring different kinds of attributes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that will be fantastic. But it's arranging itself. Yeah. We are a melting pot of European students. Yeah. We didn't expect that in the first place, but and, they're coming anyway. And, and also, you know, the fact that you have teachers from different Countries. kinds of yeah. Tantra approaches, this is also very important. Yeah, to get different inputs. Different streams. Yeah, different understandings mm -hmm. and then making your own yeah, awareness about that. Many them. streams going into one ocean. <laughs> <laughs> if you only had one stream, going into the ocean, that would be a poor ocean. We yeah. need streams from all directions and that creates a very rich ocean. Oh, thank you so much <laughs> for sharing with us. It was thank really you. a pleasure. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank so you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>